Errors are part of a scientific measurement. They are things that we cannot run away from. There are two different types of errors known as random errors and systematic errors. Random errors varies and are very unpredictable from one measurement to another, while systematic errors have the same value or proportion for every measurement. Random errors are said to be unavoidable and can sometimes cluster around the true value. While systematic errors can be avoided, uh, there is certain things you can do, such as calibrating your equipment and uh, to, to fix your systematic error. So random errors are said to be unavoidable. However, one of the things we know about them is that they actually affect precision. There are different ways that these errors uh, crop up into your measurement. It could be that you are weighing on a scale, but you position the scale differently. You don't ensure that you know there's a, a bubble that's supposed to be centered and you then don't look at that and therefore you would get a slightly different reading. Or how you read a volume on a flask or you top up a flask. You know, how you read your meniscus could uh, result in uh, random errors. You know, and different things uh, such as that that sometimes happen, but you cannot necessarily pinpoint exactly what happened. But that um, results in variation, you know, from what your true value should be. Systematic errors, as I've mentioned before, can be predictable. They are either constant or have a proportion, a similar proportion to your measurement value. So systematic errors uh, primarily influence measurement accuracy. And this could be resulting of a behavioral error, which is consistent. So every time you do something exactly the same and therefore you get the same error, or imperfection in your instrument calibration or environmental um, interference, but those that are consistently so that every single time the same error pops up. And as you can see from these, because it's the either if it's behavioral, the same person doing the same error or an instrument, you know, if it's imperfect and you're using it every time, you will get the same error consistently so. And that will definitely be affecting your accuracy. So that's why systematic errors are said to, to, to affect accuracy. You sometimes have drift. You know, you'll find some equipment do tend to drift. Uh, whether it's because the device was not given enough time to warm up if it needed to warm up or the time it was used or the environment it was used in and over time it then drifts either lower or higher you know of the expected value and those kind of things is you can almost predict how it's going to drift depending on the condition if you then become aware that there is this drift happening and once you have identified it and correctly identified a systematic error you may be able to reduce it to a certain extent or minimize it you know uh, with certain things and be able to be in a level that is acceptable. How do we eliminate these errors? Starting with random errors, remember these are unpredictable by nature. The best way is by repetitive reading, repetitive measurements, and then averaging the results, almost trying to zero the error. This is why it's quite common practice in analytical measurement to conduct and experiment three times to have three readings and then report the average. With systematic errors on the other hand, you can try and eliminate or at least minimize these by things like routine calibration, um, using controls within your experiment to ensure that your working range is quite narrow. Uh, you might also want to have a look at using improved techniques because sometimes the method itself might have inherent um, systematic errors or inherent biases. Another thing you need to remove, try and remove as far as possible is personal bias. These are just few ways where you can try and minimize or, or even eliminate systematic error. But you need to be able to understand where these errors are coming from. So if we now go back to our previous presentation try and tie in with us where we were talking about QC trend we said as you look at your QC trend you might see a bias and this bias could be due to systematic or random errors 
So now this will be based on the rules that we spoke about, whether you have a systematic error or a random error. What you then need to do is ask yourself a few questions. Firstly, you have a look at your method and you just look, is this method maybe bias low, intrinsically so that it doesn't matter what you do, it always gives you a low result. So what you can do is you run a CRM in this method, then you run a CRM in a different method that does something similar and you just see that is one method lower than the other, consistently so. Another problem might be through the instrument itself that it also shows a bias, you know, and then for a certain element, it might not be for everything, it might be certain elements that behave in a certain way. Your reagent in your standard, how do you check those from one run to the next? How do you ensure that you don't have a drift? If you do have a drift, what is causing that drift? You know, those are certain things that you can have a look at to try and pinpoint where these systematic errors are actually coming from. When it comes to random errors, which is more difficult, some of these might be due to matrix interferences. But if you're not aware that there is a matrix problem in your method or in your sample, then you will not be able to pick this up. It could be also mechanical variation or even electrical interference. And some of these might not be consistent. That's why you will not be able to pick them up easily. So that makes it even more difficult. But as things happen, you try and look at what's happening and how do I then deal with it at that moment. As I've said before, the use of CRMs and plotting QC charts and doing trend analysis is actually to give you a story to help you understand your process so it is very important that as you look at these results you then ask yourself what's happening with my method what is the behavior you know that's happening if you do repetitive runs how does this thing do if you're looking at systematic errors do you have a common error occurring every time you know do you have a common error occurring at the same person you know, when they're operating an instrument or performing the method, that might be, you know, as I said, there's personal bias. Or is the instrument behaving in a certain way where it's consistently low or consistently high? Those are the things that you need to look at. So CRMs, QC charts are there to guide you, to give you in-depth understanding of what is my method doing and how is my experiment uh, progressing. And if you start looking and interacting with the data, you will start being able to eliminate uh, certain errors that crop up in your system and better control your overall process and ensure that you are always within the, your specified limits and you're able to give your customers quality results. At the end of the day, we do this to assure quality of the results produced in the lab. Thank you. See you in our next video.